continue in an unused clothes. Once again, this has been the QR code. Take a picture, okay. Dave, which is a good friend. Uh, the most important thing I have learned is that endoscopic ear surgery, or at least the concept of physiology, is not new. If we are here, it's because we stand on the shoulders of the greats of ear surgery, including the microscopic ones that led us to be here. And as a matter of fact, uh, to perform a safe and effective endoscopic ear surgery, you must have a very good microscopic background. If you don't, it's not so good. So to do endoscopic ear surgery, the first lesson is to understand that we need to perform microscopic ear surgery. And we have uh, seen the evolution of ear surgery and the evolution of our specialty within instruments to put light inside of cavities. And the second important lesson I have learned, and it's a quote from the Vienna Endoscopy Museum, they have now said, is there is no difficult surgery. There's bad light and bad exposure. If you can expose things, if you can put light to things, you can do whatever surgery you want. Uh, for many, many years, the symbol of VAT was not the microscope, neither the endoscope. The symbol was the frontal mirror, and this is the Berlin ENT department. This is Professor Gustav Kiden here in the front. In the back, you have the system. The residents are not here because residents are not human beings. <laughs> so they are holding the symbol of VAT, which is the frontal mirror. And we, you saw the video that I showed of Professor Manfred doing this approach. And what endoscopes, and this is lesson number three, what endoscopes have provided to me is that we can see better, at least at the middle, in the middle. And this is a video of the sinus tympani, and we can see inside. But the fourth lesson is very related to the third lesson. We can see sometimes, or most of the times, but sometimes we cannot work because we still don't have the correct instruments for some correct tasks that we need to do in the in the middle of year. Lesson number five, it's not a fight. We are not fighting the microscopic eyes, and the microscopic eyes should not fight us. Because we are not microscopic or endoscopic ear surgeons, we are ear surgeons. If you use an endoscope or a microscope, you are having to take care of the best care possible of your patient. And I have a lesson number six, which is very very, very related, is microscopes are good for the mastoid. Endoscopes are the perfect instrument for the middle ear. And we should always start our surgery when we talk about inflammation within the middle ear, because the middle ear is the place where the disease actually starts. Most of the time we do retroretinal incision, mastoidectomy, to at the end of the surgery when you are very tired to go to the middle ear. But as a matter of fact, you should invert that. You should go first to the middle ear and then go back to the mastoid whenever it's necessary. But sometimes it's not going to be necessary. And it's not that we don't use the microscope. Sometimes we use the microscope to do uh, what we need to do. Lesson number seven, the length of the endoscope is very important. Uh, Dr. Thomason started with the small endoscopes, but nowadays we use the endoscopes which are suited or fitted for endoscopic surgery that we call nowadays, which are the three or four millimeters in diameter and 14 or 18 centimeters in length. Why would, do we use those? Because we don't sword fight with uh, the endoscope and uh, uh, the hand. And of course, uh, you need to have a three CCD camera. If you don't have a three CCD camera, don't even start. Because otherwise, you can have complications. Most of the complications that Dr. Kennedy showed, including that eye complication that we have a lot of slides that in Brazil, was because not wasn't because of endoscope because of the lack of visualization. When you have a lot of blood, if you have a one CCD camera, you cannot see things well, and then you can have trouble. You can get into trouble. You have angle endoscopes, 30 degrees, 45, 70 degrees, but you should always start with the zero degree. Because when you use angle endoscopes, at least if you're not experienced enough, you cannot see things very well, or you cannot command uh, the eye-hand coordination in a very good shape. So, uh, Understanding the physiology and understanding the dipanic istimus, understanding the ventilation rules is very important, and you should always look for that uh, in uh, the uh, middle of your surgery and in the mastoid surgery. And we have talked about the dipanic 
reasons. And understand the anatomy. This is all about the anatomy. You cannot agree with any word that is going to be said here in this Congress, but at least one thing you have to agree, that the endoscopic middle ear anatomy is easier to understand, it's easier to view when compared to the microscopic middle ear anatomy, the same anatomy. So nowadays you can have total microscopic, endoscopic, endoscopic assisted combined approaches, and that's a very good way to do surgery. Uh, one last thing is the learning. This is a slide from late Pothier, and he used to say that the microscope plane is a very established learning. We use the microscope for the last 60, 70, 80 years. Uh, but the learning curve of endoscope, on the other hand, is very bad. And one of the most common mistakes that I see very often, I travel a lot in the world to, to the courses, is uh, most of the times you have a surgeon, a very experienced surgeon, very good with the microscope, with very decent results with the microscope, and he wants at his first endoscopic surgery to do the same thing that he does with his 30, 40 years of experience on microscopic surgery. Of course, he's not going to do it very well, and it's easy to blame the instrument, to blame the endoscope, than to blame himself. But the benefit curve, on the other hand, is very different. The microscopic, we know where, where, where it can be, where it can let us, but the endoscope is highly We are going to see here in this uh, uh, Congress, here in a very way. But I'm here not to provide a very big expectation to you. So, because when you have a big expectation, you can have a very big fallout. So, most of the times, you have to understand that uh, seeing things that you see here, ear probes, open implants, whatever, sometimes stage surgery, sometimes it takes practice and it will take experience to perform. To start endoscopic ear surgery, you should start with small cases, small tympanoplasties, then a small carcinoma, and then when you gain experience, go to bigger cases. Otherwise, we can have what the Professor Kennedy showed us uh, in, in the last slide. And this is the last slide that I'd like to show. It's a slide I pulled from Dr. Philip Littlefield, former coroner of the U.S. Army. It said, endoscopic ear surgery has a lot of advantages. And you'll see here throughout these days the big advantage that endoscopic ear surgery has brought for ontology. But don't confuse it as being easy, because it's not. Actually, endoscopic ear surgery is more difficult than microscopic ear surgery. And if you're not willing to take all the setbacks to be a resident again, to learn how to hold the endoscope, to learn how to work with the endoscope, endoscopic ear surgery is not for you. So thank you very much for your time.